unlike macOS Tahoe, iPadOS 26 feels a bit buggy, especially the search bar, which just refuses to behave. I'll probably regret installing this beta because I don't have a backup. You'd think after all these years I'd have learned, but no, I never pick up my iPad before jumping into a new beta. I'm always just too excited and just go for it. The bright side to all of this is that iPadOS 26 is definitely smoother and more responsive than iPadOS 18. But there are a few rough edges that need polishing. Let's take a look at what's new in iPadOS 26. I was really excited to try that glossy, clear look with liquid glass. But unfortunately, iPadOS 26 doesn't quite get us there yet. What we have instead is an automatic tint that is taking its colors from your wallpaper. Compare that to macOS Tahoe, where the aesthetics really shines, it's clean, transparent, and feels more intentional. On the iPad though, it still feels halfway there. Even the control center has this annoying background that covers part of your screen. If it were transparent, which we were expecting, we'd be able to see our apps and icons underneath. Blurred out, of course, but we'll still be able to see them through the glass. You do get a hint of the transparency effect in the app library and on the dock, but it's subtle and not quite what we're hoping for. The user interface across different apps looks great though. Even the Apple Notes toolbar, which we weren't fans of in macOS Tahoe, it actually looks really nice in iPadOS 26. It's less transparent than the one in macOS, so it's not nearly as distracting. I haven't found it distracting at all. The modern icons also look much better here. We'll dive deeper into Apple Notes in a separate video. Apple Reminders also looks fantastic. But sadly, there is nothing new for pages, numbers, or keynote. I was really looking forward to seeing how these apps would evolve, but it looks like we have to wait a bit longer. We've got new icons for the camera and password apps, and the keynote icon got a subtle polish too. It's amazing how much of a difference a new background color and slightly rounder icons can make. They give the whole interface a fresher, more modern and minimalist look. Really loving how it's looking on App Store. The new glass sliders are also great. They're not just pretty, they're super responsive too, so really happy to see those. The color-coded folders with emoji icons are great, but I wasn't expecting the colors to be tied to tags. Tagging a folder and changing its color really should be two separate things. I would love to just pick a folder color without having to tag it. Is that too much to ask for? But if you already use tags, you might actually like this setup because it's kind of like killing two birds with one stone. I really appreciate having folders on the dock. This will definitely improve our workflow. No more jumping into the files app just to access documents on your iPad or in iCloud. I really love this feature. One of my favorite features in iPadOS 26. The new compression icon also looks more intuitive than the one we had in iPadOS 18. Not sure why we had the folder thing going on before, but this one looks right. One thing I wish they would improve though is how folder colors are handled. They don't show up on the sidebar, which is a shame. macOS Tahoe had the same limitation and I was hoping the iPad would handle it better. So that's why we really didn't mention folders in macOS Tahoe, but you can still do this in macOS on your Mac. 
It's a bit confusing seeing the same folder look one way on the dock and a completely different way on a sidebar. If we're customizing them, that design should carry through everywhere the folder appears. What do you guys think? Shouldn't our customization be consistent? We'll definitely cover each app in more detail later on, but for now, let's just mention them. We're really happy to see Preview and the phone app finally come to the iPad. Preview is much better for PDF reading and annotation than Markup and Books. So we're really excited to have that on the iPad. It looks like both my iPad and MacBook are using a different account for my phone. When it's time to go through the phone app, I'll gather the strength to sort that out. Until then, I really can't test this app just yet. The journal app is easily the most exciting new addition in iPadOS 26. And now with Apple Pencil support, could this finally be the great journaling app that we've been waiting for on the iPad? But that's a whole other video and there's so many apps to cover in iPadOS 26. And I almost forgot about games. We already took a look at this in macOS Tahoe and it looks pretty much the same on the iPad. Let me know which app you're most excited to try in iPadOS 26 and if there is one you want us to dive into first. Let us know in the comments. iPadOS 26 has taken multitasking on the iPad to a whole new level. Windowed apps are so much better than Stage Manager. We really should have had them sooner. What I love most is how familiar they feel if you already use a Mac. You can resize and stack your windows however you like, and in iPadOS 26 you can even tile them, just like you do on the Mac. The new menu bar is also a great addition. It's been a little difficult to bring up though. I've also had a few moments where I accidentally activated a window I didn't mean to, so palm rejection still needs a bit of work as well which I'm sure will all be ironed out before the final version of iPadOS 26. And the folders on the dock, super helpful when multitasking. You can even choose how you view their contents, either in a fan or grid view, which gives you a bit of control depending on your preference and your workflow. Background tasks make it so much easier to work with multiple apps without interrupting what you're doing. We've needed this for years, especially when exporting videos. It's such a relief that we no longer have to sit and wait for hours. Okay, not hours, but we don't have to sit and wait to finish exporting our videos. We can just keep working on something else, which will definitely save us a lot of time. Of course, this will only really shine once developers start building it into their apps. And some apps need it more than others. Just like in macOS Tahoe, iPadOS 26 brings updates to messages too, but honestly, those are a lot better to explore on the iPhone, which we will when we're looking at iOS 26. Now that we have proper windowed apps, maybe it's time to say goodbye to State Manager altogether. What do you guys think? Let us know if you're still using State Manager in your workflow. We're just curious to see if it's helping anyone out there. And with that, I hope you guys found this useful. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Until next time, fantastic human, stay fantastic.